Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Every time I remember the Queen, the highly energetic Barbara Stanwyck, I'm always curious about her fame and the controversies and how the two defined her Hollywood full of activity career life. From regrettable childhood and unfortunate marriage to heartbreaking love life, this entertainment genius meandered through with her commanding manner to become Hollywood's highest paid actress in classic movies, amidst a life of misery, scandal and the never-ending debate about uncanny sexuality. Did Barbara Stanwyck and Tallulah Bankhead have a romantic affair? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Barbara Stanwyck, I guess, needs no introduction, unless you don't know much about her era. If you still remember Stella Dallas, The Lady Eve and Double Indemnity movies, you already know the lady with provocative marriage, before her marriage with Robert Taylor, even though many thought she had a better life with the latter. I guess twelve years was too long for a man to endure her kind of lifestyle. Until we discover why she felt heartbroken when her union with Taylor ended, we can only agree with her that if a party in any marriage decides to separate, there's nothing to fight for. You have to let go. That sounded intelligent from this Brooklyn-born star, but some of us believe there is more to her love life than meets the eye. I heard that no actress worked as hard in Hollywood as Barbara Stanwyck, the reason some said she is the actor's actor. Of course, coming from an abysmal background may have pushed her to seek extreme fame and security that ironically ended in complications, bedroom scandals and younger flings. There is still an ongoing debate about Barbara Stanwyck's sexuality. Several rumours and insinuations tend to link her to an obvious life of lesbianism. This pretty and iconic performer's private life showed enough evidence to connect her with some kind of woman-to-woman -woman love life. With critics saying, assuming the reverse is the case, her harsh and masculine nature, on screen and off the camera, may have endeared her loyalty to the homosexual lifestyle. During her outstanding 50-year entertainment career, Stanwyck was able to battle her way to the top echelon of the movie industry, creating a name for herself as one of the most trendy and successful actresses of her era. So it will not be out of place to fix her name among Marlena Dietrich, Betty Davis, Greta Garbo, Ava Gardner and related classic Hollywood ladies. Even without formal acting training, Barbara was able to appear in over 80 movies with four Oscar nominations. It tells you of a charismatic personality with an innate talent for acting. She practically excelled in the industry with boldness and skills rather than just beauty. So it makes sense to see her as a tough product of self-determination rather than the Hollywood studio system. She penetrated Hollywood, left behind ugly childhood misery and into a life of glamour. Her roles in Double Indemnity, The Lady Eve and Night Nurse made her an indisputable Hollywood superstar. Analysts may have stopped probing issues about her sexuality because it would still be hard and near impossible to conclude, though observers still believe that there is something strange about Stanwyck's marriages, first to Frank Fay and Robert Taylor. Most still see it as a cover-up. The reason for that may not be far-fetched because around the latter part of the 1920s, Stanwyck was providing dance lessons at a homosexual and lesbian illegal establishment run by Texas Gwynnon, a muscular promoter identified as a girl-to-girl -girl action character. It is believed that Texas's personality may have inspired the terrific deep-voiced saloon girl Stanwyck portrayed in 1947's California. Similarly, the lesbian vocalist Tallulah Bankhead once hinted that she had an affair with Stanwyck. Recall also that she played a lesbian part in one of the first depictions of such a character in Hollywood, when she appeared as Joe Courtney in 1962's Walk on the Wild Side. Of course, not a very good record for her image. Unfortunately, or do I say fortunately, Stanwyck rebuffed any discussion about her sexuality. I still recall a reported incident where she was to have infamously pushed a reporter 
Bose Hadley out of her home in anger, after the fellow inquired to know if she had any time been involved in a same-sex love relationship as the like of Marlene Dietrich did. By way of analysis, and to be fair to Stanwick's private life, it could be that her independent nature excited the women community, and homosexuals enjoyed the charm the actress introduced in those fantastic, unconventional roles she played. While critics were still arguing that there's no such thing as a tough woman in an evening gown, with all her Hollywood fame, Stanwyck cemented it all with homosexual icon status in the 1980s, when she connected with dynasty by-product the Colbys. It seemed Barbara Stanwyck has a way of staying relevant in the gossip media with her numerous scandalous love life. Just recently, actor Robert Wagner disclosed how he began a romantic affair with Barbara when he was just 22. Then she was 45, and already among the famous names in Hollywood. Fortunately, that very relationship escaped scandalous publicity at the time. It, however, was known among her friends, who were privy to many of her activities. At birth, Barbara Stanwyck was known as Ruby Catherine Stevens, a nativity that occurred in 1907 somewhere in Brooklyn. Her lower-class parents, Catherine Ann and Byron Stevens, had things going for little Stanwyck until she was four, the year her beloved mother died from pregnancy complications. After the sad incident, Stanwyck never saw her father again after he left for work and never returned. Life would not remain the same for Stanwyck as she ended up under the custody of her elder sister, Laura Mildred. But when Mildred became a showgirl, little Stanwyck became homeless and was sent to many foster homes within a year because she always escaped from the facility only to be returned to another home. It continued that way until she finally ran away. We can as well guess the kind of education a child in this situation would get then in Brooklyn. Even though she could not stay concentrated in any of the public schools she attended, leading to very poor scores. Oh, before I forget, they said she easily picked a fight with fellow students. Some sort of a bully, I guess. As a teenager, she already knew that her fate was in her hand and that she has to do all she could to survive, and this is what she meant when she said, I knew I'd have to earn my living. I was willing to do that. Academic appeared a formality because at 14 she ditched her education and began menial jobs. She also nursed an acting career ambition. After watching Mildred's tours, she imitated her backstage practices. Two years later, she was hired as a showgirl for Ziegfeld Follies. The young beauty worked during the night shift while also augmenting her income by teaching dance lessons at a homosexual and lesbian speakeasy. Expectedly, Broadway was next, as she was cast in Burlesque in 1926, which turned out a huge success. Then her first bit part as a dancer in Broadway Nights in 1927 for First National. It was the year her name turned from Ruby to Barbara Stanwyck in line with the producer's suggestion. The stage was set for this self-made Hollywood star, who once said she felt sorry for pampered people, because they once felt sorry for her. I've always been sorry for pampered people. They're very sorry for me. Stanwyck's most celebrated part was her role as Phyllis Dietrichson, the femme fatale of double indemnity. Even though reports say she was terrified of playing that killer role and almost rejected the part, but Stanwyck was director Billy Wilder's number one choice. Stanwyck first met comedian Frank Fay while she was doing burlesque. In 1928, after watching his show, the two fell in love and came together as husband and wife. The 21-year-old Stanwyck would later move with Faye to Hollywood, where he was said to have assisted her getting juicy deals from Warner Brothers to Columbia Pictures that were devoid of extended engagement. She made some films that may not be very popular today, but got great attention then. The couple adopted a son, but all was not well with the marriage because of its frightening, obscure side. Though a star himself, Fay became extremely jealous of Stanwyck's Hollywood success, and when argument did not go his way, he turned the family into a boxing ring. Regular dangerous smash from a drunken Fay was alarming, and it continued. Often Stanwyck would seepage the fight scene, hike the fence into Joan Crawford's building, and would remain there until she thought it was safe to return home. Because the two legendary stars were all-time friends and one-time neighbours, so she usually seeks refuge at her house. 
After marrying Fay, Stanwick thought she'd found someone who'd offer the love that she had been looking for all her life, but it seemed if she must remain in showbiz, it must be on her husband's approval, which she was not willing to accept, a major source of their conflict. It initially was because Barbara could not conceive due to abortion-related complications from her earlier life as a chorus girl. Faye wanted a child, and so that issue was settled following the adoption of a ten-month-old baby. That marriage came to a horrific end in 1935, after a dangerous quarrel that made a drunken and angry Faye push their adopted son into a swimming pool. That incident made her file for divorce and took custody of the boy though the trauma of that marriage later made her damage her relationship with the adopted child. Stanwick was not willing to endure parental responsibility, but she was ready to fall in love, and she did in 1936. As soon as handsome actor Robert Taylor joined MGM in 1934, the two began a relationship. Barbara once described her meeting and bonding with Robert as coming out of an emotional black hole of Calcutta, he was a great relief to her being slightly younger and handsome. After working together in This Is My Affair, Robert Taylor, then a movie sensation with MGM, had the perfect chemistry for Stanwyck, but she was hesitant to get serious with another relationship, with what she had been through with her previous marriage. So the duo flirted with platonic affairs for three years before MGM encouraged them to marry in 1939 but critics say most things about the marriage, including photographs of the engagement and wedding, look very calculated. In an undisclosed ceremony put together by MGM, Barbara Stanwyck was reported to have married Robert Taylor. The news made headlines at the time between Taylor, 27, and Stanwyck, 31 years. The marriage was believed to have been forced on her because Stanwyck was already in a scandalous relationship lifestyle, whereas the Golden Age studio prefers their stars maintain strict moral codes, devoid of sexual recklessness. Robert Taylor and Stanwyck's union began blissfully, at least for a while. As someone suggested, the two enjoyed a mentor-mentee rapport within the period. It was over a decade before Taylor encouraged her to file for a divorce. On what grounds, you might be asking? The formal report shows that Taylor needed a break from Hollywood, and Stanwyck didn't agree to that, but that information might not be true because of several other issues with the marriage. Taylor and Stanwyck still cosseted in multiple love lives with several different persons, while still legally married to each other. Some accounts say Taylor discovered that he could not perform in bed with Barbara. She became suspicious and looked for it elsewhere, as she was seen hitting it off with William Holden, who was newly separated from his wife. Though Stanwyck loved Taylor, she reasoned that it is either he was meeting with other women or he was homosexual, but homosexuality was unlikely since Taylor did fine with other women. On his side, Taylor took the advice of a psychologist who told him the only way to ascertain he was not a homosexual was to try other women, rather than worrying about his wife. After co-starring with his leading lady in The Bribe, Ava Gardner, 26 years at the time, he began an affair with her and got estranged from Barbara. Not too long, Taylor also got entangled with Lana Turner. When Barbara got to know about that, she was upset and threatened him with divorce, to which Taylor encouraged her to do so, saying, "'At least I can perform with them.'" After the separation, Stanwyck said she could not get him off her mind because she could not stop caring for him. Stanwyck remained single thereafter and told friends he was her best love. She equally demonstrated the same when Taylor died. She took a break from acting to show how devastated she felt, but her love life was never affected because she continued exploring every romantic opportunity. For Stanwyck, age is just a number. The reason at 45 she went into an affair with another Robert, 22-year-old Robert Wagner. The duo frolicked romantically for four years after meeting him on the set of Titanic in 1954. After exploring the young man, she dumped him and moved on with her life. Their relationship was a top secret because it was concealed from public scrutiny and the press did not know about it. Only Stanwyck's inner circle, like Nancy Sinatra, Frank Sinatra's first wife, and Spencer Tracy, who was also in a furtive affair with Catherine Hepburn, knew about it. If what Wagner's 2008 memoir said is anything to go by, Stanwyck showed him mature love, and eventually left him high and dry. 
I was very involved with Barbara and called her from Tarpon Springs every night, he says. But when she left, he found himself in that controversial marriage circumstance with Natalie Wood. Another fellow who pointed out his affair with Stanwick in the 1950s is Farley Granger. He wrote that he had once had one night fling with her in his 2007 memoir, Include Me Out, My Life from Goldwyn to Broadway. A fan who knew so much about Barbara Stanwyck said in 1981 she was seen caressing a gold cigarette case while answering a journalist's question. The beautifully ornamented brilliant ruby box with her initials was a gift from Robert Taylor. Like everything she did in life, Barbara Stanwyck was a chain smoker, which started at the early age of nine. She did not stop smoking till her death at the age of 82 an incident occasioned by a pulmonary disease in 1990. After her demise, fans and friends discovered that Barbara had opted not to be given any form of funeral service. Liberal-minded women have always had to make their way in Hollywood. How Gloria Graham's affair with her stepson made her a Hollywood outcast. Let's watch this video.